three, two, one. <laughs> It's the maiden voyage here on Headhunter Gaming, and it's a big deal, which is why it's a long video. But you know what else is a big deal? GreenManGaming.com, and you supporting Headhunter Productions for future content exactly like this. Oh, 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 oh it's heavy. This thing is very scary when it spins. Hey audience, welcome back to the Head of the Space program, and it's time, it's time to see if all our work pays off. I have activated every single engine, all 25 of them, I had to activate them manually, which, um, if that's not scary enough, we're about to leave the Kerbin system on the maiden voyage of the Pegasus. And no, the Mun was not the maiden voyage. That was a shakedown cruise. The maiden voyage, I feel we shouldn't we actually need to go somewhere. So, I've strapped down those arms, given them uh Given and, and uh, absolutely force them to not move to the best of my ability. If I could get the rotors to stop moving. Hmm. If I could get the rotors to stop moving, that'd be that'd be fun. Can I get these to just not move, though, please? Yes? Hello? Maybe if I put the torque limit to its absolute limit, and then just tell it not to rotate, everything should be fine. Because right now it has zero torque, and it just spins, and it's obnoxious. All right, we got... About 12 minutes here until we have to burn those engines. And that's going to be the most terrifying part of the mission. The first initial burn. Because I have no idea what's going to happen. You, I don't know what to expect. You don't know what to expect. I have high hopes for this thing. I hope it's going to be fantastic. But literally everything could go wrong at this moment. If you're watching this video, and if, and, and, and if you're watching this video, that doesn't mean something didn't go wrong. I'm gonna upload this video no matter what happens. All right, T minus seven in-game minutes and counting. The entirety of Kerbin is watching as this enormous spacecraft prepares to take to the stars spread its wings and fly into the great unknown that is the Kerbal system where Kerbals have dared not to venture in a very long time. All right, T minus one in game minute. 45 seconds, 40. T minus 30. T minus 20. Bring time acceleration down to times one. Minus 15. And we're gonna burn 886 meters per second delta V. Finger on the trigger here. 12 seconds. Very slow, I know. T minus 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 
one. Ignition! Oh! oh my god! That is scary powerful! That is 25 wolf pound engines doing the best they can to push this thing. We have to burn this for three minutes! We might have to do a second a second orbit. Keep burning at periaps. How's our fuel efficiency on these things? We've already used about 400. Stable enough, so we'll keep going. Should be. We tied it down with everything we had. Oh. We have burned longer than this but to get things in orbit, but at the same time, we've also burned shorter. Or, uh, how do our pilots feel about this? Bill, how's the view up there? There's a lot of lander in his face, but we're stable. A lot of lander in his face. Ooh. Where do we stand orbit-wise? G, very high. Alexa, set timer for 30 seconds. 30 seconds, starting now. We're gonna burn for those 30 seconds and then shut down the engine, make an orbit, come back around to periaps. See how much speed we can bleed off with this initial burn. It's a big ship! We're gonna need multiple burns. Alexa, stop! Okay. We have 632.8 meters per second left to burn. So now, we have to go around the dark side of Kerbin, and then back into high orbit. Well, not back into high orbit, we've been to the mud. Problem is, that engine was a fair bit more powerful, more beefy, um, and this one is not. So low orbit of Kerbin to its to the edge of its sphere of influence is about 1,090 meters per second delta V. We only ended up with about 800, which means it's lighter than our estimates. It should be better than we thought. This is this is as high as we got though. Kerbal Space Center is right around there. So we're still on a pretty decent plane. And we might end up flying right by the Mun, actually. All right, give me the map. 
I'm gonna eyeball this myself. Eyeballing myself. What's that? Oh, Minmus is out there. We might get a flyby of Minmus. All right, start slowing the time accelerator down here. Slower. And we're going to aim pretty much prograde. All right, pretty much right on top of it. We can burn any time, so we'll burn now. Off, kill rotation. Orbit, prograde. the node. Uh, I need to get a look at our wobble. Wobble factor is actually okay. Just amazing. should start getting some enormous jumps here in whatever. We just need to be way more efficient with our burns here. We're leaving periaps. This number to this apogee to about halfway to the mud. And I gotta get that flyby. We're not gonna see much of Minmus either. That was wistful thinking. module to interplanetary space. It'll also be the first time I bring something this big to interplanetary space. It's big. It's a big rocket, okay? I keep mentioning how big it is because it's big. like a huge jump, then we're just going to roll with it. It looks like that's coming up here in a second. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. What 
once you get that, like halfway to the mun, it starts really going. Now instead of going up by about 10,000 a second, it's going up by 100,000 a second. Now it is exactly 100,000 a second. Plane's a little crooked, but that should be fine because Duna's orbit is a little crooked. All right, we've reached the Mun. Let's just roll with this burn until we uh, pass Minmus and then exit the Kerbin system. Orbiton from Minmus to Duna, 660 meters per second. If we could get this thing into a parking orbit around the Minmus, it would be like a gateway almost. A gateway out of the Kerbin system. Or yet maybe the mud. At that point we're just copying NASA. Alright, shut down, we have interplanetary. What's our fuel? It was about one-fourth of a tank. Not that bad. Could be way better. I'm going to try something here. Low orbit from the Mun to low orbit around Duna. 910 meters per second. How about geostationary orbit? To... Okay, somehow geostationary orbit around Kerbin is more. The edge of its sphere of influence to low orbit is 450 meters per second delta V. We just burned about one-fourth of that, which isn't exactly ideal, but that's what we get. All right, everybody can go to work now. Bill, you're in the uh, science, uh, science division. So, get to work in the lab. Bill, go to the lab. Bill! There we go. And then it's Billy Bob Guard. So, it's Bill and Bill in the lab. Joff Key is down in engineering because he's an engineer. And that is where the crew belongs. And also, the arms didn't wig out or anything, which is very, very relieving. <sighs> okay. Now we leave Kerbin, and I render a video Well, it's, well, accidentally minimized it, but I render a video while it's doing that. Only took us 18 and a half minutes to get out, to get out of the Kerbin system. How long could this possibly take? Oh, 15 days. It has taken considerable, t considerable time outside of time acceleration um, because I just want to see how it does. But we've now reached high Kerbin orbit. I believe this is about the same altitude, or I could be wrong about that. It's about half the distance between Kerbin and the Kerbin mass relay. So, uh, yeah, we're, that's where we stand uh, distance-wise. Anyway, um, I figured we would conduct our first round of tests. Just open that, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, all right, keep that one. Temperature. Logged. Seventy-three 
seismic data. No, seismic data can be done on an object of this size. Christ's sake, the thing is so large. <sighs> Look, this thing is so large, it has its own gravitational pull. <laughs> There's no way it doesn't. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Uh, get uh, someone out of lab. Billy Bob Guard. The only person on the crew who has the standard spacesuit. What's up with you? We have that cool new one. Four people on this crew have that cool new one. I think five, actually. There's only seven people on that. I know that someone's wearing the retro suit. Remove the data, restore the materials bay. Well, if we could just figure out a way to get the materials bay down to the surface of Duna, be awesome. All right, restore. I do not like that the frame rate tanks when we restore these things. That I do not like. You okay, the, okay, yeah, I was just resetting. Log the pressure data, keep the experiment, grab the data. All right, and a uh, EVA report. High orbit over Kerbin. Keeping, all right, just be careful going back in. Don't hit any of the panels. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, and uh, don't forget to store everything. We're up to 35 experiments on board because we didn't dump the 25 or more that we that 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 we got from going to the moon. <laughs> Stupid us. Oh, hey, check it out. There's our uh, mineral processor. This thing only has a small mineral processing plant. We could potentially fit a bigger one in between this fuel cone and the remote guidance unit. That's an idea for our next mission. Anyway, um, now that uh, now that I've talked for uh, about four minutes or so, uh, I'm gonna show you guys the problem we have. Kerbin's here. But Duna is there, behind us. This is literally the worst time for us to even think about a transfer. So I've been experimenting a lot. We're not going to get it on this orbit around the sun. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, cut to a few days later. where our speed is going to be to, you know let's just do the experiments again around uh where minmus orbits also we're relatively close to minmus i'd like to see if we could get a shot of it turn the map off see if we could spot uh, that tiny tiny there it is you can barely see it very, very tiny. I'm not even sure after YouTube compression you're going to be able to see that thing. There it is. And again, we see Minmus all the time. Get us a crew report from up here. Space high over, high over Kerbin. Like, wow. <laughs> this is really high orbit. We're going to do another observation of the materials bay while we're up here. High radiation environment caused a few of the samples to glow. 
Neat. And our mystery goo. Very good. And uh, the most important one, which is the gravity detector. I'm going to log the uh, gravity data because it is incredibly light out here. Like, insanely so. And we'll skip the pressure data this time. All right. Uh, this time, Bill will head outside. Bleh. <laughs> See, Bill's got the new suit. <sighs> Careful, don't break any of the doors. And also, don't hit your head on said doors. Collecting. Restoring. Collecting. Wait for that to finish breaking my game and then restore the other one. All right. Temperature. Okay, good. Take the gravity data and the... Uh, can we please do some seismic data on my spacecraft? Because the thing wobbles enough that it has its own goddamn earthquakes. <laughs> it's hardly even an exaggeration. The thing's large enough to have its own gravitational pull, and I don't mean a small gravitational pull. No, we could have a satellite orbit this thing if the game actually accounted for that amount of gravity. It's that fucking heavy. <laughs> All right, so... Let's leave Kerbin's sphere of influence and see how, exactly how long it's going to take for us to get to Duna, or at least start the burn to get us on our way. Okay, let's see. Rendezvous planner. Establishing an... When would I need to do a home and transfer? In one year and 297 days and two hours. And we would have to burn for two minutes and 27 seconds. Yikes. Uh, the good news is our slight angle actually matches the Duna interception plane. And if I wanted our orbit to be, or our closest approach to uh, be 40 meters, what would that entail? A very slightly different burn. <laughs> closest approach there would be 100,000 K. What if we burn just a little bit more? 100,000 K. Uh, well, right now we're, well, now we're on top of the sun, apoapsy. All right, so we actually need to burn less. We could get pretty close with 93,000. I wanted to see if we could... 92, 92K... 88k, ooh, hang on. How much closer can we get? 
65,000 kilometers. That's better than the 100K we were getting. Oh, wait, here we go. Okay. Now we actually have an intercept. Okay. That Arduna periaps is still 4.6 million meters, though. If we keep burning, we'll get a bit closer. There we go, 42. 33 mil. And we lost it. That's okay. But if we got it again. All right, we're down to 24. So what if we... Oh, no, not there. But what if... Give it a little bit of an angle. 25. 24. Yep, yeah, that's working. 20 mil... Getting a better and better periaps each time. Nine point seven mil, which is about nine thousand seven hundred kilometers. Six point four mil, which is six thousand four hundred eighty five kilometers. Let me just get some uh, information here. All right. Ike, which is the moon of Duna, has an apoapsis of 32,096 32, 32, meters. Where are we? 4.5 mil. Well, it also has a uh, periaps of 31, 3.1 million. Okay, just keep burning in that direction. 25. Wait, did that do it? Fuck yeah, that did it. That'll put us uh, in between. That's right there. We'll put us in between Ike and Duna at closest approach to the planet itself. Which is in insane. That's insane. That is the best goddamn maneuver I have ever done since that one time I tried to intercept Elo. And the Old Horizon, no, the Old Horizons probe did not make it. It didn't have enough Delta V to get it into orbit. But hey, we got a flyby. But it was supposed to land. It had a rover, and the rover can't land now. Oops. <laughs> well then, we just left the carbon sphere of influence. Which means it's time for... Experiments. A lot of experiments. This is the first time. This is the first time I've left uh, the Kerbin system with uh, with this uh, with this much stuff. I see. All right. Let's see. Space high over the sun. It would be fun to paint the rocket with this. Yes. Mystery goo. Goo feels right at home. How about some uh, temperature? Yeah, overwrite the last one. Okay, sun gravity. Recorded accurate measurements of gravitational forces in these conditions. Good. 
All right, whose turn is it? Billy. <laughs> we got Bill and Billy. <laughs> but Bill, that, Bill, they call him like Big Bill. <laughs> Thankfully, they're wearing different suits, so it, it's not too impossible to tell them apart. <sighs> Wow, he just had a bunch of ladder momentum. Collect the data. Wait, no, restore it. Get in there, grab the other thing. Collect. And restore. There we go, finally. All right. Take the gravity data and the temperature data. Anything about the pressure data? No. Logged. All right, uh, can we get an EVA report out here? Feel kind of small right now. You hope you, you, hope you know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Uh, store everything. We're up to 43 now. We are going to have a lot of science to do. You guys should start researching. Okay, good. That's not going to affect the uh, other thing. All right, let's see here. Uh, crew report. Yeah, override it. We're doing as much science as we can. And before we uh, cut to edit, Joff Key is going to transfer over to the luxurious, beautiful lander control module. To turn the lights on. So now everything has the has its lights on. For the next year and 297 days. So I just turned off my copywritten music because I came up with a rather ingenious idea. What if we just kept this ship in orbit around Minmus? I mean, sure, it'll be harder to get fuel up there, and the tanker will have to be smaller. But low orbit around Minmus to low orbit around Drez is only 3,500, compared to Kerbin, which is 4,400. Low orbit to Min low orbit from Minmus to low orbit Gilly is 2,500, and the current engine on the Pegasus can make that trip. Or hell. Min, Min Miss to Jewel is 1,800. Min Miss to Laith is 2,900, which is just within acceptable parameters. Or, of course, Min Miss to Val, 3,500. Or Min Miss to Bop, 5,900. That's still a bit out of our range. But the big one, Min Miss to Elu, 4,600. Mohol is still probably going to be an issue. Yes, it is, because that's 6,700. Again, with Moho, we have to perform a sun dive, which is always a pain. Um, but the, the big one, Midmus to Duna is in triple digits instead of quad digits. Midmus to Duna is 660 meters per second. That's impressive. Min Mr. Ike is only 900, and uh, intermoon uh, transfer is between the Minmus and the Mun is 670. The thing is, from the thing is, from the surface of Kerbin to low orbit around Minmus, it's uh, 6,230. Surface from low orbit in Kerbin is 4,500. And before you guys ask, from the surface of Kerbin 
to low orbit around the Moon is 5,900. But there's another unique opportunity is that we could establish a ground base, a ground base that would mine resources from the surface of Minmus and we could establish a refueling base. And then we just send rockets up to fuel the ship. Because from the, from the surface of Minmus to low orbit around Minmus is 210 meters per second. Triple digits. Low triple digits. Ideally, if we had something like Gilly, where you only need 30 meters per second of fuel to go from the surface to low orbit... That'd be fantastic, but we don't have that. Minmus is the smallest thing we have. I don't know. Something to think about. Just something to think about. Ooh, wow. It's almost like the last two years just flew right by. That was weird. Anyway, I turned all the lights on in that time. Uh, we got a little bit more science done. Uh, Jeb wrote a novel. Uh, filled in, helped write the novel. Bill had the brilliant idea to transmit the whole thing back to Kerbin. Um, the power died during the transmission, and the heat went out. So that led to a very awkward moment where they all had to cuddle up to preserve body temperature, and it was especially awkward for Mr. Kerman. However, then the solar panels finally got the batteries up to snuff after about three, three days. Uh, then the uh, heat came back on, so uh, everything was fine after that. Oh, and uh, the scanner finally started working, and we started picking up uh, uh, very mysterious signals that went da 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 da. And there were a number of other things. Uh, Bill finally uh, finished that video game that he was working on. Yeah, he he's game dev. Bet you didn't know about that. He's a scientist, but at the same time. Him and Billy Bobgart have been down in the lab. Uh, they've been doing some uh, pretty interesting research on aspirators, air, servos, science, and tubes. And with said tubes, they invented a more superior version of the internet. One that is not a series of tubes. Um, and there was also a gas leak. Nobody died, but there was a gas leak. Anyway, uh, we're one month away from our burn, uh, so we're going to go ahead and time accelerate over to that so that we can get that uh, started. It's been a long trip already, and we're not even there yet. We're about over halfway there, at least, time-wise. 13 days, 12 days, 11 days, 10 days, 9 days, 8 days, 7 days, 6 days, 5 days. Start slowing this down, please. 2 days. 1 day. Oh god, why did it cut down to 5 hours? Are days only 5 hours? Uh, don't know. Either way, we're getting ready for a high G burn here. Or somewhat high G, not really. Look, we just need to secure everything. Close the door. Knock out the, uh, knock down the scanner. By knock down, I of course mean turn off. There we go. Very nice. Oh, we did some spacewalks. Uh, we got some great shots of, uh, of frickin', um, uh, Bob? Yeah, it was Bob. Bob, down near these enormous drive cones. Whew, they're big. It's an enormous engine, guys. I'm quite proud of it. Mm. Anyway, we're five hours out from that burn. Let's, uh... 
Do that times a hundred. Maybe a thousand. Four hours is a long ass time. Oh, in terms of real life, I got some videos rendered while this game was running, which was fun. I turned the fans up a lot. They, they had to be up because Sony Vegas and this game together, <laughs> they do not get along. They do not get along at all. Anyway, we're coming up on our burn here. Thankfully, we're already oriented correctly. Before we actually begin said burn, we will get uh, smart ASS to... I didn't realize we entered the, entered the zero hour. We'll get the smart ASS to assist us in aiming at the target velocity. 12 minutes, 11 minutes, we're still going for this massive burn, 8 minutes, 7 minutes, 7 minutes is all that we can spare to not burn. And that engine's going to be on for two and a half in-game minutes, which translates to a really long time. <laughs> One minute. We're about to enter the zero minute, and we've entered the zero minute. This is going to have to be extremely precise. We got two engineers down in the engineering compartment. Uh, everyone else is going to have to strap in. And this is this right here is the only place they can strap in. That or the engineering deck. I think we should have engineers on the engineering deck whenever we fire the engines. All right, we got 37 seconds here. And by the way, I say in-game seconds because look how slow it goes. 40, 34, 33, 32, 31. That's what I mean. <laughs> T minus 30. Uh, so far, from a uh, structural standpoint, the ship is top-notch. It is held together fantastically well under uh, various small maneuvers, some smart ASS maneuvers that uh, went mostly unnoticed. It's just reorienting itself, don't worry. But yeah, we're not getting any wobble out of it. It's very secure, very stable, very strong. T minus 19. Um, she's just a fucking champion. Fucking champion rocket right here. Anyway, we are very nearly uh, coming up on uh, burn here. T minus 13. Oh, is that my mind? 12. 11. All right, T minus 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Ignition. Beautiful. Hallelujah. We're still taking some fuel out of the reserve tank. Even though we shouldn't. 
Unfortunately, it also means that the top tank here, we will be using, we, we could use this as an effective meter. It looks like we've taken out about one third. 50 minus 180, actually let's do 180 divided by 50 is 3.6. used up one three point six of our tank. So one point two. One third more or less. All right, we're coming up on uh, one fourth here. That'll be, that'll be a freaking much easier guesstimate, because three-fourths of 180 is 120. Plus 60, you get 180. At which point we will officially report we are down to three-quarters of a tank. like the shaking though. <laughs> That's a bit unsettling. We're nearly down to 5,000 Delta V. We have used one fourth of the tank. Start the crew report. get our burn time down ever so slightly. So we're saving a bit of fuel here. We will, however, have to slow down. That's the hard part, isn't it? It's all, what are you smiling at, Jeff? <laughs> I 
53 seconds remaining on that burn. Wondering if the shuttle could pick them up from the orbit around Minmus. Probably. It probably has enough fuel. not a problem. Probably. We'll see what happens. We'll see how much fuel we have left. We might be able to insert back into a low curve in orbit. Map, please. I'd like to see where our maneuver stands. We're getting there. Another good thing is we'll be intercepting uh, Duna at Apogee, which is when we'll be moving the slowest. So that's a given, seeing as how we have to go away from the sun in order to reach Duna. I don't know why I said that. Look, the old Horizons probe is still orbiting. It's not going to hit anything. Uh. All right. We're coming up on engine shutdown here finally. We just went up back up to 2.8. Please uh, reorient so we can fine tune this. Where does our periaps lie right now with Duna? 27 million. We're trying to get lower than that. That 2.8 meters per second is going to make a world of difference. We'll do a light burn. I'll tap the shift key. Very light burn. All right. How's that spin going? Damn it. It's going, he's turning all the way around. I think we overshot it. Look at this. Pretty much almost all four solar panels in the sunlight. For all four of the main panels. These are now the main panels, because these other ones are just Those were obligatory. They were supposed to look like wings, but they don't. Instead they just look like corrugated steel. Huh. Anyway. <laughs> Easy now. Take your time. We literally have time. We have all the time in the world to slow down. It's just... In this general area, it will be more effective. <laughs> I don't want to give it RCS. It doesn't need RCS. We don't have any 
urgent maneuvering that we have to do. We're just doing some fine tuning here. Some incredibly necessary fine tuning. We have the Duna intercept, but now we need to get closer to the planet. That 2.8 meters per second astronomically makes a difference. All right. Almost there. Almost right on top of it. Easy. Yes. That's beautiful. You're almost there. Come on. Work with me. I realize how obnoxious the reaction was if I just work with me. All right. Poke it. Very gentle. Okay, very gentle. What's our current periaps? Let's see here. Dude, a periaps is 2.5 bordering on 2.6 mil. One more should do it. Very, very light burn. Actually, wait. No, wait. Hang on. What did I say Ike orbits at? Ike orbits at a periaps. Oh, do I? Okay. Shut it down. We are within the sphere of influence please kill all rotation fuck it's not wobbling at all it's like a rock <laughs> okay <sighs> two year transfer to duna we are now at a Apogee of 10,008.6 meters per second. That's awesome. And we have uh, our next burn in 346 days, one hour and two minutes. Let's just hope the heat doesn't go out this time. All right, here we are, about a year later, more or less. Uh, we are about 70-some-odd 70, 70 days out from our encounter with Duna. At this distance, we might be able to see it coming up behind us. It's a small planet, and we might not. We might not. Pretty soon it's going to be up in our face anyway. From this position, looking at the trajectory of the sun. Yeah, it looks like we're about to come up behind it. Or it's about to come up behind us. Here, uh, slow us down. See if we could get visual contact. Five... We still have a direct communication line with the uh, Kerbal Space Center, which is weird. Or is it... Uh... Oh, it's Balker Banner. Huh. Anyway. Uh... Should be about... Uh... There are a lot of dots in the sky. That is probably my best guess as to what it is right there. It's best guess. I'm going to keep looking. Unless... 
No, that might be it. Okay, well, to be fair, you guys can't see sh shit after YouTube compression and everything, and... Uh, normally, it becomes easier to spot a planet if it's out against this. But this one's not. So, let's get closer. Let's, um, let's let our spacecraft and Duna get, uh, get familiar with each other 20 days from now. Hmm. Can we see it now? Because I'm starting to get worried at our distance between, I don't know if that burn time accounted for the actual mass of Duna, and we might just slam straight into it. It does, how, it does however, look like we're going into a polar orbit. That could be it right there. Oh, there you are. Okay, we have visual contact with Duna. There it is. That circle right there. Okay. Never mind. Maybe we won't slam straight into the surface of Duna. It'll all die horribly. Where's our periapse? Our periapse is in three days, so let's be very careful with our maneuver. Yeah, we're going into polar orbit here. More or less. And there's our Duna mass relay that's been up here for God knows how long. Easy now. Get ready to aim retrograde here. We pretty much are. Hmm. All right, we can start burning about now. Oh, I have to take that. Hang on. Okay. Finally. Um, and by finally, I mean uh, a whole bunch of stuff, honestly. Okay. So, orbit. Amos retrograde. Pure retrograde. We need to slow ourselves down. And we might need to circularize as well. We skipped over Ike, which is good. There's Ike. Old friend Ike. We're still not bouncing off the Duna mass relay, though. Which is the whole purpose of the Duna mass relay, which is we can send th signals through the mass relay, which is a more powerful relay back to Kerbin in a matter of seconds. All right, I have no idea how much we're gonna have to slow down in order to circularize us, but let's find out. Get us aimed. Oh, good. He answered the call. Okay. All right, let's start this burn. See how much it takes.
slowed down an uncomfortable amount here, but all things considered, we're doing insanely well. How much did we just use? Oh boy. The leaving should be used significantly less fuel. Alright. Well, we're here. No turning back now. There's the beauty. Alright, Apogee, please. We're going to do a big old orbit. We're inside of Ike's orbit, which is good. It still takes two days for us to get to our periaps, though. All right, let it spin so we can get to retrograde a little quicker. And to be fair, once we separate the lander, we're gonna have some, we're gonna have a bit more delta V to work with. I'm thinking we'll drop the lander before we uh, level out our uh, before we level out, though. We might even be able to land at one of the poles, which I've only managed to do twice. One here and one with the Traveler rover. The rest of them are in these middle valleys and everything. That looks like a real good landing spot right there. But our destination is what it is. At this point, I'm not picky. We're gonna we're gonna get caught in the atmosphere and let gravity do the rest. The descent stage will be our parachutes. And Get us into low orbit. Yeah, that 
that's moving way better. Six, five, four, three hundred thousand, Give us another good spin around. I'll circularize it at the periapse. Very nice. It is nice. Okay. Ideally, what we should do for our next engine is mount some nozzles on the front. So then we don't have to spin around and we just get some hotkeys to switch between the two engines. Woo -hoo -hoo. Hi there, Duna. How you doing? <laughs> uh. Might as well start getting ready for descent. So, first things first, uh, where's our fuel dump? Here it is. Let's transfer some fuel in. Just aiming retrograde here. We're about halfway there. It only has a about orbital speed of about a thousand, which is impressive. Look at that. That is that is a beautiful shot right there. <laughs> okay. Well, we made it to Mars. And the ship didn't explode and fall apart like it does in, uh... What was that one game where we rolled dice to go to Mars? Tharsis. That was a terrible game. I looked up the ending. Turns out, it turns out if you make it to Mars, you're stuck in a time loop. And you just have to play the game forever. That is bullshit! That is bullshit. I hate that so much. Ugh. Burning again. Okay, there's our Ike encounter. We should go to Ike sometime. Maybe to fly by, not to visit. Oh, better yet, can we use Ike's gravity for the quick boost? Ooh, that is an idea that I will have to mull over. Close 
close enough. Thank you. All right. Welcome to Duna. And we have 3,600 meters per second delta V left. However, pay no attention to the liquid fuel meters. Low orbit around Duna to low orbit around Kerbin is actually 860 meters per second. So we have ample supply to get us home. Okay. Jeb is going down, obviously. For our engineer, we will have Mr. Kerman. Joffke's staying on the rocket this time. He's had more Duna to more Duna than ever. More Duna to last a lifetime. Enough Duna to last a lifetime. Who's our scientist? I think you know. It's Billy Bobgard. All right. So we didn't finish our uh, MP transfer. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, there's our MP. Okay. Lander, ball's in your court now. Do us proud. Yeah, there it is. An additional 100 meters per second delta V. Beautiful. All right, SAS. Us away from this thing. Oh, turn off those uh, thrusters on the uh, rover, please. All right. Thrusters. Shuttle is away. Okay, Lander. Ball's in your court now. Do us proud. In the retrograde. You don't need RCS for that. You have so much control. Okay. Maybe we do need those engines. Tell you what, let's see. Duna atmosphere, maximum atmosphere height is. Mm, I'm, tr I'm on the wiki right now. Uh, atmosphere. Depth of 50,000 meters. Okay. So we know where we're going, at least. Activate the main engine. Ideally, I didn't want to activate this engine yet. But we need it. So get our periaps down. To 45,000. Just a short burn, it should be fine. All right, that's 40,000, but whatever. Works for me. All right. Pegasus, see you later. Uh, we can turn those lights off. We're not going to need them yet. Turn all of them off, actually. Well, keep keep the crew lights on. Crew report. Planet is very red and appears to have deep brown furrows across the surface. There does appear to be some kind of ice at both poles, though. As for an EVA report, we'll have Pegasus perform one. It's 
Speaking of Pegasus, just left our just left our range. God damn it! Look at that beautiful frame rate. Uh, isn't it beautiful? Oh, we haven't seen it in forever. A smooth frame rate. Oh, what is that? <sighs> Time warp times ten. Looks like we're gonna miss the ice caps at least. That's what I was hoping for. 50,000, there we are. We are in Duna's atmosphere. We're gonna ease into it. It has a cool atmosphere, so things should be okay. I don't trust this engine, guys, do you? Oh shit, the parachutes, ah oh, crap. All right, first things first, we gotta get the drogue chutes. We'll start with the drogue chutes, and then we'll get the main chutes. Let me know when our apogee enters the atmosphere. Easy now. Steady on. If we land in this great big uh, crater right here, that'd be ideal. Arrow breaking. That's what we're doing. I think I see objects down there. Could be wrong. But we are at an altitude of 44,000. Which is extremely close for a, any planet, actually. I should tell you about my Drez orbiter sometime. <laughs> I don't know what happened to that thing. It just vanished. All right, at periaps here, we'll be at 40,000 meters, which is deep within the planet's atmosphere. Let's activate times for time acceleration. At that point, we should be getting significant air resistance. All right, it's bouncing off of Pegasus, which is finally bouncing off the Duna mass relay. And then that's going to Kerbit. We will eventually lose contact with it, though. All right, we're now in a much lower orbit from Pegasus. Okay, that's not how communication works. <laughs> you're Look, you're cutting through an entire planet. I don't know how powerful your communications dish is, but it's not that good. What's our current altitude? We're going back up. We just did a bit of a skip. It'll probably take a few orbits in to kill our momentum. Maybe even more. Not sure yet. Give me time, Excel. All right, we're about to leave Atmo. And we just left Atmo. Times 10. Any day now, you want to go up to times 100. There we go. All right, now we need to be above 100,000 meters. There we go. Times 100. And we're not going to get any higher than that. In fact, things are only going to get slower from here on out. Times 50. Ten.
And we're about to enter atmosphere here in just a second, and there it is. Right, you don't need RCS for that, please. This will take a few more orbits, I think. It's only been an hour, though, so... Hmm... There's so many better places to land, though. Tell you what, let's cut this off and, uh... Come back when this is ready. Okay, our descent is coming to a head here because we just went below 50,000 on our apoapsis, which means we're coming down in pretty much the wrong place. We're coming down over the ice cap, which is not where I want to land. I want to land on the ice cap. I suppose we could do a hard burn. Uh, Burn hard. See if we can break. After that, we'll arrow break down to the surface of the planet. I do not want to use too much more, much more fuel. All right, that's good. That's good. Hopefully, aerodynamics will drag us down far enough that we won't hit the ice cap. All right, here we go. And uh, start falling now. Over the Martian dawn. Would they be called? Would they be called something different if they came from Duna? This is basically the equivalent of Mars. It doesn't matter. Okay, maybe we are gonna hit the ice cap. I don't know. Point is, burn harder. If we can burn a little bit more, we can uh, get, like, yeah, yeah, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. And we could get right beside the ice cap. Okay, we burned a lot of fuel there. Ooh. We have enough. As long as we don't burn any more. If we burn any more, we're not going home. Of course, we are also dumping the rover and these. Maybe we could get a bit crafty with the fuel distribution. We'll work on it. Okay, antenna broke it. Oh, crap. Hang on. We can hit those drug shoots now. I think. Well, it's all. Never mind. It's armed. It's armed. It's armed. Yep. That. Both of our teeny tiny antennas just broke off. There's our drugs. Uh. Ready for mains. Those are rocks. We need the mains. Drones are up. Ugh, that's a lot of D-cell. Main shoots armed. Main shoots armed. Okay, main shoots armed. Extend the legs. SAS, give it up. Just give it up. <sighs> oh. Oh. Ugh. Oh, she's wobbling. She is wobbling a lot. Maybe we do need the SAS. Get us aimed retrograde. Okay. Reaction wheels saved the day. Uh, RCS thrusters burn. See if you can lower our impact speed here. Okay, just. Okay, that. 
The ship is effectively on its side. Bouncing, 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 bounce, 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 bounce. Not the most ideal landing. Again, not the most ideal landing, but... Hang on. Maybe we can flip it back around. Roll it, maybe? That was a really rough landing. Hang on, I'll work on it. All right, I think I got something going here. Uh, ideally, I should reload our autosave, but we're here now, and I think we just... No, we're not out of power yet. Wait, here we go. Mm, come on. Come on. It's a square, which is incredibly difficult to roll. There's a hill there. If we could get it rolling down that hill, we might have a chance here. This thing is the most overpowered reaction wheel system available. How is this so hard? What if we, like, track the legs real quick? And Whoa! That gave us a kick. So if we extend them again... Hmm... We really shouldn't burn more fuel... Hang on, maybe the, maybe the thing's on to something here. Look, it's night. I'm not even gonna let them out until morning, so. Let's just, and, I, and we just ran out of electricity. Shut it down. Let the batteries turn back on. <sighs> All right, let's see if I can fix this. I got it! 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 I retracted the legs and rolled it slightly. Ha 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 ha! The legs are up. The legs are up. The ship is down on the surface. And we're here. God damn it, we're here.